Alright, uh, hello again, this is Philip at thebest3d.com and uh, I'm going to uh, walk through a couple of steps that I took to create this animation. Uh, let's see, this one here is sort of a game on a sequence of letters that uh, you can turn upside down and they look like a different uh, statement. So I have for instance this one here, uh, no pun. And uh, it's very short, uh, it's barely 30 frames. This one is a little bit longer, has a little activation, uh, it's a little uh, rotation. And actually the whole the whole thing here, let me uh, turn that uh, volume down a little bit. Right where the audio control is, there you go. Alright, so there's basically a sequence of <coughs> different things happening here. And uh, I wanted to go through that exploratory way. You see an animation coming in, you see something unrelated, and then something kind of double from that. A little collision here. <coughs> some disappearing, some rotating, mechanical movements. So <coughs> this is not one single animation. Right? It looks like a nice little uh, animation at the very end. But uh, in fact it's a, a whole sequence of a uh, couple of individual animations. But they are made to kind of connect and to be uh, usable in such a way that when you have the end of the first part, that defines the start of the next part. Um, and, and so gradually we'll have these different pieces uh, come together and <coughs> we'll then just need to put them into um, into your video editing tool. Uh, we could possibly even put them together, or stitch them together in uh, however director. But um, I usually use this uh, power director, another example of the program. Its initials are PD. Not Project Dog Waffle, but Power Director from Cyberlink. And so, what I simply did in the end is uh, load each of these different pieces. Um, and you can play them here to see this one, you can play the next one. And uh, basically, each of these then will need to be put together on the timeline, right? And so, no magic there. Well, there is some of it, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. The thing is, is you have a sort of a, an idea or a vision of what you want to do. So let me explain what I wanted to do with this. Uh, when you look at the Project Dog um, under Help and About, Howler, uh, you'll usually see the main revision number here. You'll see the product number and then sort of a product uh, project code, project name. This one is keeping cute. We had a couple of really uh, interesting names uh, in the past, and then so we've been debating what it should be called for 10. Ni number 9.7, I think, is not a full release, but more an intermediate release for those who upgrade. Um, number 7 has some sort of a name, I think something like uh, Dog um, Don't quote me on that though, it may have changed, and um, we were looking at perhaps doing something. Um, that includes the word undo um, because upside down is almost no pun. It's really O pun, uh, but if you rotate it, uh, it looks like um, undo. And so I wanted to basically walk through a couple of steps to create some of these animations. I did it with version 10 or the, the beta of 10, but I'm pretty sure I can do almost everything, almost everything in version 9.6. So let's get started. Um, the first thing you want to do is do this one here. We have the letters NO that's coming from the left. And this one's actually pretty slow. We may want to make this go a little bit faster. This was my first test. Let's see what we need to do in order to do that. First of all, we'll want to decide what the resolution is going to be. I actually use 1280 by 720. Uh, I'm going to go with a lower resolution here just to go through this a little bit faster for the sake of the demo. Uh, so I'm going to go with uh, 960 by 540, 540, and there. So that's a resolution I'd like to work with. Let's go store this blank image, and we have already a single image frame there. Uh, now the next thing is to uh, put some text there and position it perhaps in a very central place. Um, so one thing I'm going to do is use the text tool 
and <clears throat> make this a little bit bigger. I know I'm going to make this bigger with the font. Here's the font, F as in font. And <clears throat> with the font lister, I don't remember which tool, which uh, font I had used. But uh, let's see, maybe impact might be, let's say, impactful. And <laughs> uh, fairly large. Let's go and put something here like NO. Yeah, that will probably do. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's make it, see if we can go exactly 200, just so we have something to remember. <clears throat> or not, 188 is not bad either. <clears throat> so let's use uh, 188. Um, and uh, we can grab the corner of this text box and make it kind of uh, as tight as possible. And then grab outside of the box to kind of reposition it. And maybe we are not too picky and say, well, that's about the middle. But if you'd like some reference lines, uh, one way to do that is you scroll down on your um, uh, sidebar and you look for the bottom items here where there is the grids. And in the grids area, you'll notice that you can enable the artist guides. So that gives you a bit of a reference to a bit more precisely position this box or the letters. And maybe we want it kind of stuck to the left of the, la the middle because we're going to have pun on the right side. Right? This is going to be no pun. Um, so we perhaps want it like this. Now we could just uh, this, uh, put it in as a brush, make it a brush, and then animate the brush uh, or paint the brush. I'm going to do this uh, perhaps the more traditional way here, uh, and that's simply say apply text. Right? So the text is in here, and then I can disable the artist guide. I probably don't need them quite yet or anymore. <clears throat> now the thing I want to do is turn this into an animation. Uh, let's take a quick snapshot, store image copy. Always a good habit to take there. And in fact, even better if you take the time to save this to, uh, to a file, because sooner or later you'll be happy you did. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to go and <clears throat> animate this. And we don't need many frames here. We want this to come in from the side in about a second. If we play it at 30 frames per second, all we need is 30 frames. Uh, perhaps we'll give us a little bit more, just so we have a few more. <clears throat> and 36 sounds like a good number. Uh, now, they're all at the same place. Right? right now, there's no animation. What we need to do is make it so. We need to make an animation where this thing kind of moves from the left into the scene and stops right there. Now, there's a couple of ways to do that. I'm going to take my timeline to do that. And with the timeline, you have a, a way to shift it or to translate it. In fact, let me show you just on the regular filters. You can go <clears throat> to the transform and either transform it or shift it. When you shift it, or you grab this hand and then start moving it around. Right? Or you can use these numbers for moving them, for instance, just horizontally. Uh, but all of the frames will be moved by the same amount. If you click Any or Animate, uh, it, will, it will move it all by the same amount. It's still going to be appearing in a static place, just a different location as it currently is. What we need really is to change that amount of translation or shifting. And that's what the timeline will let you do. With the timeline editor, you can find almost the same list of transform filters. And there is a shift in the transform. And if the only thing we're doing is shifting. Uh, we'll go with that. We're going sideways. So there are two parameters, translate x and translate y. And we can even shift it several times. And it kind of wraps around to the other side. Uh, so we're going to need to deal with that perhaps later. If we come in here on the left. Um, if we go out, it's starting to wrap around to the other side. That's okay. We can deal with that later. Let's not worry about it right now. So first, let's go and reset the amount of transition or translation and then say, okay, that's going to be the end of our movement here on the left. Keyframe that. Uh, here on the right, excuse me. And maybe we want it even to store, uh, to, to pause there even before. So let's do another keyframe a little bit before that. But then here we go to the very first frame. And just move it sideways. Grab this thing until you see it disappear here. There's no point in, in wasting uh, any empty frames before that. Let's go just very close to that and cut it about here. Keyframe that. Now we're ready to render that. right? And what it's going to do is going to animate this movement to come to the right. Now it's a, a spline interpolated animation with a little bit of a backlash. And that may be cool. It may give you a little bit of an elast elasticity or like a spring-loaded behavior. But you can also click here 
uh, and if you're lucky, it's not going to crash. There used to uh, crash. There, there, there used to be a bug. I think in 9.5, it may still occasionally see the 9.6. So save often before you try that. If you want to go out of the spline interpolation into the linear interpolation, I'm not going to venture it here because I'm. No, I know it's usually crashing on me when I can't, uh, when I don't want to. Uh, in version 10, I haven't seen it crash, so it's either fixed or just uh, not happening yet. <clears throat> uh, so I'm going to go and say, well, I'm happy with this animation. Let's go render that, apply it. Boom. So that was really quick. Uh, if it wasn't that good, we can click undo, do some changes, and then just do it again. All right, so this was good. Now I'm going to see, well, what did we really do? We move in from the side, but we wrap around to the other side. So there's a little cleanup we need to do, and we can do this in a couple of ways. One thing I want to do is basically protect anything from happening on to the left side. That one's good. So one thing you could do is take the uh, the selection tool and mask it right with the alpha channel. So let's go for instance here, where uh, right here we have the rectangle selection tool, and simply select it around to here. Right, you see the bounding box. Uh, it's probably easier to select uh, and show the uh, overlay alpha. There you go. <clears throat> now it's selected. And I don't know why it selected the opposite part. Maybe I have a shift or something, uh, or left button, right button. Uh, but at any rate, we have the selection. If we had the opposite, you would simply go to selection, invert, and now this part is selected. Right? Whatever is showing the true colors is selected. Whatever is not selected shows with a pink overtone. Of course, black on that won't really turn it any blacker. So if you see here, the, the, this is still black. But you can tell this is not selected, whereas this one is. And the way to test it is you take a brush and you paint in it, whereas over here nothing happens. Right? <clears throat> so you can paint. Now, how do we get rid of this little garbage on the side here? One way to do that, one really cool way to do that, I would say, is you use the Fill tool, right? And the Fill tool can either draw with the left button right here is black and the secondary color is white. So let's use the right button and that will fill it to white. Boom, this one's already clean. How about we do this over every single frame? Right, there's this one here, that one's done quickly. But every single other frame here, look at that, all of these frames, we don't want to waste our time doing this. Uh, frame by frame. There may be dozens of frames. So what we're going to do is going to go to the first one and <clears throat> we're going to erase it. And I'm not going to do the whole thing just to show it so we can, I can show it twice. Uh, this is so cool. I want to see it twice. So I'm going to hold it. And then before I let go, I'm going to hold, press and hold the Alt key. And with the Alt key, boom, it goes through the rest of the animation from the currently selected frame all the way to the end and applies a repeat action to that filling the rectangle. So now we have filled that rectangle all over the frame sequence. Uh, there's a few more to do, and that's the bottom half. I did that again just to demonstrate the point. So I can go like this, press and hold the Alt key, let go the mouse button, boom. Now we have a clean sequence. <clears throat> right? So now we can clear the selection mask and play this thing. And that's it. That's the first animation. We are pretty much done with that. So the very end of the frame here is going to be this. Now it's an important thing to do. Before we go any further, we store this. Because this is an animation we spent some time in designing. Let's store it to disk. And uh, we have something that we can go back to. But most importantly, we also store perhaps the image. <clears throat> store the image. So we can quickly restore this as the starting point of the next animation, if we need to. We'll actually won't really need to in my case here, because I'll be somewhat disciplined about what I'm doing. One thing I want to do also here is store that or save that. So I'm going to go and go to the animation menu and save this as an AVI. Now I've stored it, and that actually stored it when I, I stored it to disk. That stores it in the same format as here if I went to the save option in the animation menu which saves it as a DWA, a dog waffle animation. It's basically a memory dump of that entire raster sequence uh, of the image frames. But um, I want to save it as an AVI now. And I'm going to specify where to save it. And uh, perhaps in this case, I'm going to go to, <clears throat> let's see, um, pum, 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 D drive. Let's go make this a little bit more anonymous. Um, let's go to my daily dose. Let's go 
<clears throat> and I have a lot of tutorials here, so let's see. No pun. Well, here are my videos I had saved earlier. I'm going to create a new, and this is for the toots, for the tutorials. <coughs> so here we go. And I'm going to call this um, <clears throat> 01. All right, it's going to add .avi to that. We can see the preview here, 01.avi. Now I need to save it. Last chance to say what the frame rate will be on the playback. That's 30 frames per second. And there we go, save AVI. So now we get the chance. We get a chance to say whether we want this as uh, uncompressed or perhaps better as some sort of a uh, compressed format. I love the lagger with lossless codec because middle name is lossless. Uh, this is really a great codec to use. Spend some time in looking at the configuration options. It's it's great. Right. Now, we don't use the null frames option. There's no point in doing that here. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's multi-threading. We can do that to speed it up. Um, we can also prevent upsampling when decoding, doing playback. Uh, not sure why you would want that, but it's an option. And then there is uh, lead code. Uh, Sir Lag lags a lot, has his uh, homepage there. Make sure you pay him some respect here. He did something really great by giving this away uh, for free use. Um, you can actually support RGBA even. Now, we don't do that in Dog Waffle, but uh, animations can have a, image of, a sequence of uh, alpha channel as well. Uh, so we're going to keep this and uh, save it. And so this codec is uh, fast, it's lossless, and it's free. What else do you need? Uh, you want to, Here's one thing you need. You need to verify that it saved it and doesn't show any artifacts. All right, so here's our animation, number one, done. Now, <clears throat> let's go on to number two. So I said this is going to be the beginning of the next frame, of the next animation. So you can play here and go to the last frame and then simply start a new one by saying create. Right? This current frame is going to be the starting point of the next. And uh, let's go and click OK. And it's going to free the existing one. And now we have a new animation in which we stay with this frame as a starting point, And then we can decide what to do from here. So what we could do is add the next letter here, pun, and animate that coming from the other side. Um, we could we could also do something different and perhaps first do an erasing of the letter N and then later add the the pun, right? But then we would miss the, the funny joke of no pun. So <clears throat> since no pun is intended, let's go do that. Uh, what we'll do is we'll need the same lettering, the same text uh, to appear here. And it should remember what we used last time. So you see it's right there on top. And all we need is to simply uh, grab this, make it a bit wider, and keep typing P-U-N. And of course, we could then go select this part and hit space twice. But this, this one here is a variable with font, so it's not going to be same positioning. And so that, that introduces another problem, is how do we make sure it's actually going to be lined up quite perfectly or, or close enough? Uh, you know, when it moves fast, you're not going to notice if it's off by a pixel. But uh, one thing I would do is essentially perhaps use that original static image as an overlay or underlay or simply a layer that you see semi-transparently. So you can use it as a reference when you position this one. All right, so that's what we'll do in this case here. Uh, I'm going to go, um, let's see here, create a, a layer. Uh, bu 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 there, plus, right? In version 10, the plus is below the layer stack. So I'm going to go here at the plus, add a layer, select, make sure it's selected, and then put this image here into it. And um, we have this layer here for the pun. Uh, it's over here. And then we have this layer here for the no. And this one, we can reduce it in brightness. Um, we can... Uh, make it uh, not multiply, but maybe screen. Um, and it's not actually doing... Oh, I, I have this one here still, too. Okay, so this one is the one I want to see. Let's make sure we, we see just this one first. At uh, perhaps not the screen mode, but like a multiply mode. Uh, that way we can see it just a little bit dimmer, right? And then we go back to this one. And what we really need is actually not uh, not so much the... The, the no in here, we need the pun to appear perhaps uh, as an animation by itself. Later, I want to combine the two together. Right, so that's that's one way to do it. It's not the way I did it really, but I, I want to show that technique too. So let's go um, basically 
uh, erase this frame. There you go. So we still have the one from the upper layer. And the one below here is clear now. And what I'll do is simply recreate the animation for 30 frames. Uh, that's plain and simply empty. right? And so now I'm going to put this text on it in such a way that it kind of fits roughly where it's going to be. But most likely I'm going to be off a little bit. Now I might still want to, to have that uh, reference grid, uh, the artist guides. Uh, or I might say, uh, no, maybe not. We can... We can do that later. But let's go and place the text right there. So apply text. And there it is. So it's maybe a little bit higher, a little bit lower, a little bit too much to the right. But that's okay because we can actually use the shift. Um, where is it? Transform shift. And um, position it so that it's just next to it. Now what we're really doing here is shifting the entire image that's in that base layer. So no, it's not surprisingly, it will wrap around just like the earlier ones. But what we want to do here is simply have this thing stay kind of here. Right? So that's the right position for the final frame. Now, we have it in the first frame. Um, one thing we want to do really is uh, have it end up here in this last frame. Um, but uh, we will need it a little bit different locations before that. It, it will come. It will be on the left side first, and will be pushed away as the letter no moves in. So I'm going to probably need to push it sideways. Um, when do I need to push it sideways? That's when the animation of the no comes in, and so that's where perhaps I can uh, do. Uh, a combination of two different animations or render one on the other. There's a couple of different ways to, to really handle that. And I don't necessarily want to show them all. I just want to show some so that you can become a bit familiar with the, uh, with the techniques and the tools available here. So what I'll do is I'll create a, an animation out of this where this is simply um, uh, static at first. And then I'll do a shifting transition to accommodate for the movement when the no thing uh, jumps in. So I'm going to go and create uh, an animation from this frame. And that one's going to be, let's make it a little bit larger. Let's make it like 60 frames, right? And um, what we'll do is we'll have uh, this animation here, we have the stored preview, kind of come in front of it, right, at the beginning of the sequence. Um, so what, what we'll do is we'll say we have this thing here. Uh, we need to move that somehow, but we need to move it in sync with this guy. Right? So one thing we can do, first of all, we probably don't actually need this layer anymore. Um, and what we'll do is we'll say this guy here needs to be combined. This guy here, this animation needs to be combined and showing in here at the same time as we're scrubbing through this. And so what we could do is simply have this one put into or displayed into the swap image. Right? I used to call that the swap buffer. It's a swap channel or a swap source, if you want, or a swap stream. It's a sequence of images on the backside or in another area, in another world. But you can see it at the same time by simply clicking on this here and toggling them both on. And when you do that, uh, well, right now in the swap image, there's nothing. It's just plain white. Uh, and combining that in the multiply mode doesn't do anything here. What we need to do is show it that it comes from this. We need to say, use this animated as an animated swap image. Use as animated swap image. And when you do that, as you scrub through that, you actually see this animation going through here, right? And eventually it stops and it doesn't show anything new. Uh, and then so the question is, well, what will it do when we render this? Well, well, first of all, the letter, the pun here should be kind of pushed to the side as, as it hits it. Uh, and perhaps we may want to even have it here already. Right? So what, what I'd like to do is essentially have this guy uh, move a little bit more to the left and, uh, and then getting pushed over to the right side. All right, so this, one, this is a case where we do want to have, um, this, let me temporarily disable that. Well, actually, it's okay to keep it. Mm -hmm. um, what we want is the, the pun, which is here in this animation, we want that to be shifting a little bit to the left. So let's go to the transform, shift it, and uh, we could do shifting sideways, but that can easily introduce a vertical as well. So I'm going to go and uh, reset, and then I'm going to say, um, just change the, the X here and say, 
minus uh, 66. 600, that's too much. Minus uh, 300, let's try that. There you go. So we start here, and we apply that to every frame. That means it's uh, every frame is going to be there, right? So now is where this animation comes in, and, and we should do a, a, a kick over here. Right, should should be, and maybe there was too much transition. So let's let's do it again, but the other direction. Let's go filter, transform, shift, and this time we say let's shift it to uh, 11 to that. That's a better one. Okay, animate that. Boom. All right. <clears throat> so so we need to get this, and it's actually a little bit too high. You can see it's a little bit above the level here. So we also need to shift it up a little bit. Let's not be picky for this right now. Let's simply have it. Uh, adjust to this so that when it hits it here, it starts moving further to the right. And again, that's where we use the, the timeline because there we can change the position over time and keyframe it, right? So what we'll do is we'll say, well, that's fine all here. We need to make sure we're in the filter that does the translation or the, the shifting. Um, and so you can do, you could use a transform filter or you could use a shift filter. Uh, I'm going to use the shift filter again here. And, uh, you know, you can move it and grab it. Uh, let's make sure you click Reset here. And so now, as we scrub through that, everything is fine up to this point here. So we want to have it like this. And perhaps actually move it up a little bit so the, the Y axis is going to accommodate. Now, unfortunately, we don't see the combination here. So that's not going to be an easy thing to do. So I'm going to go, and maybe that's something we could see in a future uh, edition. So, so right now we're going to go all the way to here. Um, it's uh, at the current location and transform, and and then, uh, and then here we can actually force it to that as well. But then here we can go. Okay, when we move it to the side, when we reach the final position, um, we want this guy to have moved by the same amount. And again, this is one where it's a, it's, it's a bit difficult to make it the precise move. So you might need to kind of take the best guess here to see how it's uh, in the middle line here, or maybe even a little bit beyond that, right? And then simply kind of, there you go, and then simply kind of bring it back uh, a little, a notch there, something like that. And it's okay to do that in two iterations. All right, so here we have, let's do this little animation and see what that looks like. Boom, well, there is an overlap there. That was probably not intended, but it's not too bad. But still, maybe a linear translation would be better, uh, more predictable. Uh, so I'm going to do an undo and click this so we can go into linear mode. And then as we transition, it's probably doing better here. All right, so let's go and apply that. And, yeah, we're still very close. We may have come back a little bit too much. And we're not starting to move early enough. All right, so lesson learned. We need to do a little bit better. Let's go undo and do that one more time right here. We need to, let's see here. Okay, we're going to have this, trans this, this position here. That's no good. Um, that's just too much to the left. So I think what I need to do is really have it, when it's coming here, roughly here, uh, I need to have it start moving. And, uh, and then at the end, it shouldn't move quite that far. That was just a little bit too much. So maybe I'll keep it about here. Something like that. Um, and... And here, this guy uh, needs to be a duplicate of the prior keyframe. So I'm going to delete this one. That's the minus. And then I'm going to grab this guy so we have the right position, move to the right, and do another one with the same values. There. So that's probably going to get us a little bit closer to where we want to be. See how it's pushing it around here? It's kind of reaching it, pushing it to the side, and, and that's it. We could have gone a little bit further back. There's some fine tuning you can do. I mean, that's the thing. You can now also perhaps, um, you know, we've done the rendering. Now we can do one more in which we um, we we push it sideways. And uh, let's do a reset here. Uh, and so we could do an additional. You see the animation here. 
Uh, in fact, that's without the no. The no was not on there. It was just uh, um, being blended together. Uh, we obviously need to put the two together also. And so that's something we can do right now. Uh, we can simply uh, take the prior animation. There it is, right? Take this guy. It's still in the swap image. And simply merge the two together, right? So you can do that here, for instance, under the file, combine with swap. Uh, or you can, since the two are being shown here, as you click on that, you see the blending of the two together. Um, you can you can right click on that and say merge with swap, and then it will ask you, do you want to do that for every single frame? And so that will typically be uh, putting this animation together into a single animation. So that's that's a, a quick and dirty way to do it, and you know you want to fine tune your positioning a little bit. But it shows one possible way. It's not the only way. And in fact, uh, perhaps a preferred one might be, and that's really for you to determine which one you prefer, but maybe a preferred one would be to actually move one over the other by having one of them in the brush. As an animator brush, you can use the animated keyframer, the brush keyframer. Uh, and uh, that's a different topic. We'll do that perhaps in a different tutorial. We've done like the, uh, similar animations with the uh, brush keyframer before. I just wanted to show kind of a combination of uh, animations uh, from the main and the swap image and put them together. All right. So <clears throat> the next part, so I would typically go and, and save that uh, as an AVI once again and then uh, show the next part. And the next part would, of course, start with this last frame. Right. So uh, let's go and create a new animation, something like this. And in the next part, what we do is... Um, uh, we'll, we'll get rid of the end, and we could do that by using, for instance, our um, uh, fill tool that we used earlier to erase stuff, and uh, that basically would be something like this, right? We erase it, but you do that progressively. Now, that's one that's a little bit more difficult to do as an animation. You want it to go from here to here to here to here and keep going until the letter N is gone. And uh, instead of doing that with the fill tool, what I'll do is I'll simply pick it up as a custom brush and then animate that with the brush keyframe. There, that's where we'll have our chance to see this technique with the animated, um, uh, with the animation of, of the brush through the brush keyframe. So I'm going to go and pick the custom brush. There it is. Uh, that's a custom brush selection tool. I'm going to say pick something that's about the size of this here. Uh, even though it actually could be smaller, we can always resize it later in the custom brush. But that will pick it up. Then we need to right-click it, that same tool, so that we can keyframe to white. Right now, uh, or color key, rather, to white. Right now, white is the background color, so it's making it transparent. I don't want that. I'm going to go here and make it opaque. All right, so now it's, it's not letting that white become transparent. And the reason is that I want to make it... A possible if I paint, let's say here I click on the paint brush tool and I do the preview, I will see it right there. See how I got this this brush and what I want to do is simply animate sideways to make it go disappear like that. Right? Or well, kind of something like that. So I'm gonna go and actually make the opacity at full 255 units. That's the maximum for an 8-bit value. And the steps I might want to make a little bit smaller if I did the drawing manually. Right now I can do this. That's conceptually what I want to do. But to do it a little bit cleaner, what I'll do is I'll actually use the custom brush, uh, uh, the brush keyframer right here from the animation menu, brush keyframer. And what the brush keyframer does is it displays a temporary view that you can resample or resize. And then it also already loaded the current custom brush. So all you got to do is have it somewhere around here. Now, sometimes it's a bit difficult to see it if it's white on white. So you might uh, perhaps use a different mode just for the preview as you prepare. Uh, for instance, you might use divide. Well, that's not going to show much. Uh, you might show subtract. Ah, that's going to give you almost a negative view here since it's black and white. So that's, that's a good way. That's a clever way to see it. And all you got to do is, first of all, be in linear mode. Click on that. And then say at the beginning, that's at the beginning here, um, first keyframe, you're going to go here. Keyframe here. And then uh, go to the last keyframe and place it over here. And the here doesn't matter if you're up or down a little bit because it, it's going to be white on white 
it's going to be okay. Okay. And now the mode is going to have to switch back to opaque. And that's ultimately what we want to do. Right. This is the preview of the animation we want to uh, get out of that. Let's go render that. And we're done. Um, we can see it here now. We can turn the preview of the brush off and simply see this thing uh, is letting the letter N disappear. Now let's do something fancy also with the pun. Let's move it up a little bit. It looks like it's a little bit off. We may need to do another animation on that. Before we do anything, let's store this. We have a major step uh, milestone reached. Let's go to save this to disk. So we have a snapshot to go back to in case we need to. Um, so there it is, save often uh, in action. And so what, what I want to do is take this pun and move it sideways. And there's really a classy way to do that, which is to take it as a custom brush with enough margin around it, although not too much, because I will want to move this entire thing over to the left without breaking into or over the letter O. Uh, so what, what we could do is basically grab this, and now we have it like before as a custom brush and we could move this custom brush ever so slightly to the left and as we do that it leaves a trail also on the right side which means we will not see it reveal the original there it will just be gradually hiding it and erasing it All right so that's that's one way to do it um, another way would be again to perhaps protect the left side from any transforms or any actions and then uh, with the selection mask and then simply do a shift of this and that's the technique I'm going to use this time because maybe uh, you are more familiar with working with images that are in layers or that are behind the selection masks rather than using the brush so let's do that let's go uh, once again do a selection uh, of uh, something like this much that's going to have to stay protected right and so actually we need to reverse it selection invert that's what we need to transform and so here we're going to have the timeline editor once again with the transform filter one two three and shift it okay and what we want to do is simply shift it in such a way that it's going to be lined up just nicely here All right so that's one way to do it again not the only way and if you find this view to be too small to do it precisely maybe that's why you want to use the brush keyframe or approach because uh, it gives you a bit more that that scaling capability on the preview uh, and so you can you can control it a little bit better uh, but I'm gonna say that's the position I want now I don't want it at the end I want it at the uh, at the beginning I want it at the very end so let's go keyframe to that uh, let's go and then move back and reset and it's gonna set it back to where it was before without any further transform and so I'm gonna go set a keyframe there so now we have an animation where the pun is moving and the no is uh, becoming an o uh, and that's pretty much it let's go animate and nothing happened on the left side that didn't get transformed because it's hidden or protected by the mask and we now can turn um, the mask off and we have this animation already better there so this last frame again we will want let's store this and of course we would also save it and by the way one technique that i use a lot of times when i save little animation bits and pieces like this um, remember the first one i saved uh that was this one here let's take a look at it again uh so i need to make sure i store did i did i just store this yeah so i stored it so i can now click here to restore the previously stored one and there it is right so what I what I want to do is um, simply take a look at that and um, maybe I want to reverse it play it backwards so there's a couple of things you can do here on the frames uh, you can edit you can frame you can change uh, uh, let's see frames uh, reverse frames All right so there's time stretch make loopable there's all sorts of other frame editing on blocks of frames uh, a variety of, of things you can do here but there's something else I wanted to show you, and for a moment I just I'm drawing a, a little blank here. It will come back to me, I'm sure. Um, if I save this, oh yeah, that's what it is. So if I save this, remember I saved that uh, here. It will remember the most recent path and file name. So it's an easy way. You don't have to click here and waste your time through the navigation again, even though it still is in the same folder. 
but what you can do easier is simply add another number instead of 0, 01 you might want it 0, 02 that's too long for me either i don't want to do a click and drag so i'm just going to click somewhere between 0 and 1 it's hard to miss and then say put a 1 there right now this is one i already saved so i'm going to not do that but i'm going to do it with this one so here is the next animation that i do want to uh to store um, and that I want to save so I'm gonna go to the save and again I'm gonna just click it as 011 and save it and click to Lagarif and that's it all right and then I'm gonna go to restore this one and again go to animate uh, or save AVI uh, put another number one there so now i have different file names and they are sequential it's easy to remember which one comes first when you try to put them all together in your video editing tool because that's another key thing is you don't want to waste time on trying to figure out again which one is which so that's basically it right we have some animation that will be uh, uh stitched together eventually in the video tool there's one more i want to look at and that's to do the uh, the rotation and so <clears throat> the rotation I did was around uh, around this position, and then it came back to the other side. So this is now no pun, or used to be no pun. It's now O pun. And um, when we turn it around, it's going to be undo. So uh, we can take a look at, uh, where is it, filter, transform. This time we're going to use the transform filter. And um, we can use the rotate right here. And now you notice one thing too is it's rotating um, and it's showing black outside. Now if we want to see the tiling here, it's actually going to tile it around and we get to, to better see uh, everything still white, except for when it's at this diagonal, we see some corners. And how do we get rid of this? Well, of course, with the fill tool again, with the, tar, uh, with the alt key down, like we saw earlier, we can fix that pretty easily. Got to be careful not to fix too much of it because it might cut into some of it here too. But uh, many times we can use that to get it back to a really clean state. Uh, now here it's too big, the letters cut out. Maybe we don't want that, so we maybe also want to scale it down. right? And I will introduce even more replicas here. And this is actually just for this view. In reality, we're going to need to do that with the timeline. Right, so when we do this with the timeline, we hope to see the same filter, and lucky enough, we do have one here, transform. But there is a difference in that we don't have the tile option, not in version 9.6. This is going to be in, 9, in version 10. 9.10, you have the tile option so that it can actually repeat it, and that's a really great uh, effect you can have with that. So here, I'm going to simply say, um, oh, wait, that's not the one I want to translate. Um, I, need to, I need to start with an animation that has this initial frame as a starting point. So let's go once again, create from this current image a new one with 30 frames. And then we can see there is no action right now, but we're about to introduce either translation, a scaling, a rotation, or all of the above. And so let's do that. Let's go and uh, do the following. First of all, let's store this. We, uh, we never know. We might need that. Uh, and now we're going to do a, trans, uh, a rotation and maybe a combination of things. We want to still move a little bit. We want to also scale a little bit <clears throat> so that we don't uh, over-rotate and cut on the edges. Right? So there's, there's a couple of different things you want to do. Uh, in version 10, it will be easier to keep this white, but we can still fix that. After all, this is only 30 frames. Uh, it's easy to fill them manually or uh, with the uh, alt key and the right button uh, erase or fill rectangle, we can probably hit a couple of these at the same time. So let's say for instance, if we wanted to do an animation like this here, let's go reset that and simply do uh, start from this point and then go over here and uh, make it the linear and then say something like uh, move it here um, or maybe actually let's reset it and just move it along this axis so it doesn't go up or down a little bit, uh, but also start rotating. So we go like this and then realize that we, we need to make it smaller. There, something like that. So scale it down a little bit smaller. And then actually say, well, you know what, it's okay, just do this approximately like this.
right? Uh, and the rotation here is now perfect. We see it's now the vertical. Got a little bit of aliasing here. Sometimes aliasing helps to realize what's going on. But here's 92, so we need to try and see if we can get it to exactly 90. That can be tricky at times. Depends on the precision on your mouse. Uh, and so I'm going to keyframe that. And, and then I'm going to go uh, perhaps move it. Um, let's see, what do we want to do? Scale it. And then a little bit further in the animation, rotate it again. So more. And then here's that final position we have, right? Undo instead of uh, open. So now here we need to have it exactly 180. And there we go. So there's that. Then we go to bring it up at this point to this location and uh, keyframe that. And then for the last few frames, we will uh, scale it back up a little bit. Uh, in fact, we could uh, make it even bigger. Just make sure that there is enough white margin around it. Undo. Okay. Now, one thing that you'll also sometimes realize is that it's going too fast and then too slow, and you may want to change that a little bit. So it's this is the timeline. You can change when these things happen. These keyframes, you can just grab them and reposition them so things happen faster if they are closer together a long time along the timeline, right? So you'll see boom, boom, really fast, and then it takes a little bit longer to zoom back in. Or you could have them a bit more evenly spread, like they were before. It's really up to you, depending on what you want to do here. But keep in mind, this is not science. This is art, right? So don't 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 sweat it if you have it just approximately where you want it. The, in, the whole intent with this is for it to go so fast that you really won't have time to blink. Uh, so anyway, let's go apply that. And uh, here we are. So now we have an animation like this. And then the question, of course, is what do we want to do about these things going black? In version 10, it would not necessarily do that, except for a few on the edge when we tile it and slow down, uh, make it smaller. But here it's a little bit trickier. But still, we can use the fill tool. Right? Look at that. The fill tool, click, uh, in this case, the white is the right button. There, it's already filled. Now, we need to do that on every area, every frame. But really, I mean, there's only 30 of them. so. How quickly can we do that? Use the left and right arrow key. You might also help with that. And uh, you can click here, click here, click here, click here. And uh, sometimes what happens is that uh, you can use the left and right arrow keys to, to navigate, or you just use that and keep going through that. Right? Or you select the frames right here. That's another option too. So click the frame, and then you have the keyboard focus on that, and that's a good navigation, left and right button. So go here, right, two, three, four. Uh, if you don't want to move too far, make this a little bit more convenient. Uh, zoom it down a little bit and bring it closer. So then click here, next frame, one, two, three, four. Some of them will automatically connect, like this one here. You have two quadrants are together, and then this one too. So it's even fewer clicks. Uh, so, I mean, seriously, look at that, how quickly we get to this. Uh, and it makes it fun, and you'll respect it because it's not just doing this for you. It's, it's art, you know. You, you have some, ex some experiment here and uh, uh, something to remember. So, there you go. Let's go scroll to the second half or the remaining frames here. This one here, then this one. Look at that, single click for these. So that's, I love this. This is fast. This is going to be great. Left, right click. In fact, the selection you can do with the right click, but it pops a menu here too, so you don't necessarily want that. Okay, almost done. One more. There. Right click, and that's it. Okay, so we now have the perfect animation that we were looking for. Right? And then, of course, the last frame needs to be staying, holding a little bit longer. And so, first of all, we would store this and uh, save this to AVI, just like the others. But there is more to it now. We want that last frame to be held. Do we want it in yet another animation that we would create from here? Or do we want to just add a few more frames? And I'm going to do that this second way, which is I'm going to select this frame. And I'm going to say uh, right click on that and say copy this frame. So there's a copy frame. And then I'm going to right click on it again and say insert before current frame. So we now have two copies of the same frame here. right? And then so the next thing we could do 
is repeat that again. Right click and insert frame before current frame. So we now have three that are identical. And at this point, we can go even faster if we select these. Right? So you can select in marker right here. Then you go to the last one, out marker. Now you see the blue selection here indicates the three frames that have been selected. That's a block. And so we can go and copy this block. And we can go and insert it anywhere in this, such as the last one here. Insert the block before current frame. So now we have three at the same time. Uh, now we can also uh, select this one and make that the new out point and right click and copy again and right click and insert the block. And so we're going even faster. Let's do this one more time. Set this as the new out, out marker. So we now have uh, eight or nine so frames and copy all that, uh, copy block and then paste or insert into the ground. So if you needed one more, let's do that, you know, and essentially you, you pretty quickly have extra frames. It's basically a frame hold, right? Now we have a whole bunch of frames that it's holding. And when you play it, you can see it's doing this quick animation and then pa apparently pause, but basically keep the same frame there for a little while. So that's uh, another way to, to do little animations. And certainly if you are a game developer and you'd like to, to have some fancy little animations of this sort, this could hopefully give you some ideas of, of how to do that. Um, there's obviously a bunch of other things that you may have seen in the original video. Uh, we'll cover that in another tutorial. I hope this is going to give you a good starting point. Uh, remember, at the very end, all you got to do here is to save this to AVI. And maybe this one here is number... Uh, I think we skipped one, so I'm going to give it an extra digit here. But essentially, save it. Uh, this one here, we want to also save, so we can just go here, give it another name, save that. And that's the nice thing about keeping this dialog handy, because as long as you have it, you just need to change the name and save it. Uh, so uh, fewer clicks and you're done faster. All right, so and then once you're done with that, you simply go back to your video editing tool. You go find your videos um, that you have um saved let's see quick access where do i have those no pun toots there you go you select your videos right and import them and these are all in uh in lagarith codec and so you can then you know put them together and, and preview them and, and render that out and that's what i did so that's that's how this is all done uh in the end we have basically stitched together a couple of different pieces that were each individually rendered, typically one second or two seconds each. And at the end, you end up a nice little animation with that. All right, that's it for now. Very long tutorial, very short animation. That was it at the end, very end. Uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more. We're going to do a lot of really fun stuff with this. And uh, stay tuned for more news also in the newsletter um, about version 10 coming out soon. And thanks for watching and howling.